Tonight, I'm going to talk a little bit about Chaco tortoises and my experiences with U.S. Fish and Wildlife and the ESA. Chaco tortoises are native to Argentina and Paraguay. And you may be surprised to learn that they're in the same genus and closely related to Galapagos tortoises. I'm from Phoenix, Arizona, next to South Mountain, home of the carrot-tailed Chacawala. I've written a number of articles and books that you may have seen. And I've worked with a number of different tortoise and iguana species. And while I was best known for my work with Galapagos tortoises, I'm probably best known now for this. This is a pretty crazy story. Thieves trying to steal a 200 pound tortoise ended up running it over and crushing it after they were spooked by the owner and the whole thing was caught on surveillance camera. Monday, it happened early in the morning in Levine. Look at that beautiful tortoise right there. The homeowner woke up to his motion sensors going off and saw two people trying to lift the roughly 200 pound tortoise into their truck. When he shouted at them, that's when they dropped the tortoise and then ran it over with their truck. Sadly, that 27 year old tortoise had to be put down. Since this event, I've made a number of improvements to my security system. And as of this date, there's still been no arrest in this case. So if you are aware of any information, we're still looking for leads. Hopefully it will be resolved soon. This story has made both national and international news and if you want to follow the updates and status, join the Justice for Jasmine the Galapagos Tortoise Facebook page. This is my outdoor Chaco tortoise pen. And even though, do you see the little ones there? Even though it's a little warmer and cooler in Phoenix, I keep them outside year round. You see, we don't get much rain in the summer. Lucky if we get one day a year. So I hose it down almost daily or I have a sprinkler going through the summer months. Males and females may be difficult to distinguish, but females grow larger and males have a longer, thicker tail. Several clutches of two to three eggs are laid in late summer and the eggs can be left in the ground to hatch naturally or brought in to incubate. Artificial incubation requires a diapause similar to spider tortoises. The eggs are incubated on peat moss and after about 30 days I cool the eggs into the 60s for two months and then warm them back up into the mid 80s. Except for the diapause, this is how I incubate other species such as these Galapagos tortoises. The two hatchlings here were from eggs that were left in the ground to overwinter, and then the following year, during the monsoons, August, September, they naturally hatch out of the ground. When I saw one hatchling, I had to dig a little bit to get that other one that's covered in dirt. And this is one of the adults in the same pen. Hatch rates with artificial incubation often is poor, so I typically leave them in the ground to hatch naturally. Hatchlings weigh about 28 grams. There's mom, dad, and two hatchlings. Hatchlings are kept in plastic tubs maintained inside on peat moss, and I have grass clippings, and they'll dig and hide under that ceramic tile. And food is just placed on top of the grass clippings. And the diet for hatchlings is pretty much similar to the adults. I feed a variety of lettuce, carrots, zucchini, and this is an outdoor pen for the hatchlings. Chacos can be kept in groups with multiple males and females. However, unfortunately, I had some animal get in and kill a number of my tortoises, and I only have a trio remaining except for hatchlings that I'm raising up. I maintain hatchlings indoors through the first winter, and then they're outdoors for the rest of their life. 
I by no means have the species figured out, and they're somewhat shy, but interesting to work with. Now a quick overview of U.S. Fish and Wildlife and my experiences with the Endangered Species Act. If you want to keep radiateds or galops, you need to get a permit if you want to sell them or buy them across state lines. The CBW permit will allow a person to buy or sell non-native endangered species that were captive born in the U.S. for the enhancement of species propagation, assuming both parties have a permit. Commercial activity that takes place entirely within one state is not prohibited by ESA. Once your application is submitted to U.S. Fish and Wildlife, it will be published in the Federal Register for review and comments. I received one anonymous comment requesting that they not grant me the permit. Per ESA's website in 2017, hybrids at the species or subspecies level are not protected by ESA. After 10 years, you have to submit a new and complete application for renewal. But if your renewal is submitted 30 days prior to expiration, your permit is still valid until it's acted upon. I have inquired of U.S. Fish and Wildlife regarding my permit, if it's still valid, and what's considered residency, as you cannot necessarily go by everything on their website. Is a driver's license sufficient? Property ownership? I mention all this because even if you try to comply with all the regulations, undercover agents are watching your social media and they will try to entrap you. If you've read in Stolen World, you realize the tactics that they go to. I made a legal sale of a hybrid Galapagos tortoise to an undercover agent after looking at his Arizona driver's license. Even though hybrids should not be covered by ESA, and I've complied with all their policies, I was surrounded by armed agents, issued this search warrant, and they dozen agents or so spent the next eight so hours taking my tortoises and taking my property. And while I was never arrested or charged with any violation, I spent the next year trying to get my tortoises back. Well, this brief talk doesn't give me a chance to go into all the details. It was an expensive, emotional time. I share these experiences so that if you maintain these species or are thinking of getting a CBW permit, what you should be aware of. Next year, maybe I can do the full talk and provide additional information. But I hope you enjoyed this and you learned a little bit about Chacos and a little bit about U.S. Fish and Wildlife. Have a great day.